Welcome, welcome, welcome to a bonus edition of the Olympics so far and this Ooh. and that. And I don't know about Holly, I, I've been watching here and there, here and there. Um, I haven't caught a lot of, you know, like three solid hours except for the opening ceremonies. But boy, there's a lot going on. There I, is I mean, a lot going on. How about, how about Simone Biles and that whole USA team? Oh, I... I'm so proud of them. Yeah. Oh, we're recording this, by the way, on a Friday evening. Okay, so they still have one, more. We have, we're one weekend. Yeah, we're one weekend, and I think there's more gymnastics from that team to come, or at least I think, right? I don't know. I thought they swept it all, but I'm so confused. I know. It goes really fast. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like the following evening, you're, you feel like you're watching the same sport, but it's different categories right. or something, especially with gymnastics. And um, I'm glad you said that because I was th- sort I'm of like, thinking to myself, oh, wait, no, no, this is different. <laughs> and I cheat because I like to know who's going to win when oh, I watch it at night Yeah, because I get too nervous. I do too, especially with the gymnastics <laughs> yes. on that damn balance beam. Oh, my God. How do you, how, how the hell? She, how do her legs, <laughs> how do their legs go full spread eagle <laughs> splits? Like they're flying, well. Simone flies. She's yeah. 40 feet up. So does that Simone. Brazilian girl. Oh, and I'm glad they won the bronze. I, I was too, because she I was thought, really good. Oh, she was so good, and she was emotional, and I was root, rooting for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, not to beat I us, mean, but... You just know. to maybe place yeah. after us, which is what... Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. that, Anyway, yeah. let's just talk about generalities, okay. because neither, okay. neither of us seem to have it... You know, we don't have the stats right in front of us. Right. I mean, the stories behind the athletes are really kind of the grabber for me anyway. I mean, overall. Okay, Simone Biles, Mm -hmm. twisties, so I had to drop out of the last Olympics, remember? Right. Okay, and a lot of people did not understand that. And it's just, I think there's a lot more awareness now of mental health issues. And that could have been dangerous. She did the right thing, and that was wise. So look up twisties if you're listening and you don't know what it is. I'm not going to go into the explanation, but it could have... She could have had a very serious accident. Oh, okay, for sure. But I think that because people were a little bit negative, mm-hmm. and it gave her more of a fight to come back. <laughs> a little like, chip on her shoulder. I will show you in twenty twenty four. That's right, and show us she has. I know. I, I just oh, I get the chills. I know about her yeah. her performance because even though she might have had some step in step outs, mm-hmm. yeah. Her um, difficulty or the her, levels of difficulty. Yes, were oh my so god, so much higher. The bar was so high that it didn't matter if she stepped out. Yeah, yeah. nobody could do those acrobats or right. whatever they're called. Acrobatics. Yeah, yeah acrobatics. Well, well, the thing is, she would get like, would say like a tenth of a point deduction. Right. I'm thinking, look what she's doing, and they right. and they got it. They got it. You know. Yeah. But how about that other the Suni Lee? I think it was. Yeah. I think that's her name. Oh God, I hope yes. I'm not mispronouncing it. She had kidney issues. She no for oh for ye- three years. For three years. Yes. Horrible yes. kidney issues. Right. And look at her performance. They are. I mean, their mental capacity Mm -hmm. as well as the men because when the – and I don't want to just flip-flop, but remember when the men were performing? They were the first – I didn't see a lot of them. Oh, my God. It was amazing. They were – well, first, they're the first to win a medal in 16 years or Mm. a really long time or 50 – it's a very long time. So they placed bronze. They were thrilled. Mm -hmm. But – I just think in that sport of gymnastics, when you watch everybody and you're last oh, that's on your brutal. team. So they showed the one guy that was last. It was the all-around team performance, mm-hmm. and he was meditating with his eyes closed. He didn't want to watch anybody's performance. He just kept doing because they interviewed him after doing it over and over and over in his head. I'm like, oh, my God, you're the last guy. And they, they I think it was a close, but they made a medal, and it was awesome. Well, but, that kind of Im- um, imaging, the Im- you know, the imagery, uh-huh. whatever, is what sports uh, coaches teach Oh, Athletes, okay. yeah. That makes that you're, sense. You're, if you imagine, you know, keep on imagining. I, I remember that because when my husband played, or ex husband, whatever, <laughs> played college football, um, they would, you know, the co- coaches are teaching okay. us this. And I, I was like, oh, well, it makes sense. You should do that for any kind of any a- kind of anything. Yeah, right. a meeting, anything. But in sports, I guess that's really effective. Mm-hmm. But I was just, oh, I was so moved by those stories. Okay, speaking of stories, there's another one just to popped in my head. Flava Flav and Alexis Ohanian. Did Who's you, Alexis Ohanian? That's um, the, the, pr- the tennis 
player. Serena oh. Williams, oh, I think. Oh, oh, oh okay, right? okay. I think that's her husband. Okay. Is it Flava Flav? Flava Flav. Yeah, and Alexis, okay. They donated rent where there was a, a Olympian, a, okay. a discus thrower, who posted that she could not make her rent. So the, the two of them teamed up. To come to the Olympics. Well, or she that was, she was saying, you know, I'm Olympian, I'm here I am, and I can't even pay my rent. And it got oh, picked up. They wow. saw it. And they, I don't know how far ahead, long they play, paid right, her rent, right. but they did that. I, wow. Those are the sort of the things you just think, how oh. many of these athletes? We've heard a lot of stories, a lot of hard scrabble stories. Mm-hmm. I mean. So that Olympian goes now, goes into their competition just with a little, like a little less stress. Yeah. If you're happy to think, I'm going to go home broke or whatever. Was it in a, a U.S.? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it I was. Just, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, you never know. It was a, um, a, a field person for discus. That's all, oh, that's all I remember. I love I those stories. Name. And I have to say, I've heard nothing but positive things about Flava Flav over the years, mm-hmm. where he does these little really cool things, acts of kindness, oh. and, and does things like that. Because I, I never really knew who he was. I mean, I did with the clock and the, yeah, the, the wrapping the and clocks, so forth. Right? The but gigantic I, I, clock. <laughs> he is a really kind, kind um, has a really kind heart. Well, apparently, yeah. he does things like this on a semi-regular basis. That's just oh, to be that's noted. That's so sweet of right? both of them. Yes, yeah. to be noted. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay. What other stories? Well, are going on? there's the big story. I mean, it's one of the big stories, but it was creating such a flap. Mm-hmm. And um, it's about the boxing. You heard about the boxing. Mm-hmm. The yeah, the the female it's Italian female and the uh, Algerian also female. But that a, was where the controversy right began. Okay. So why don't we explain what happened? They they were in competition, and the Algerian female took the first punch, and the Italian ah. opponent, yeah, the Italian opponent just said, I can't do this. This person's way too strong for me. Like and, 64 seconds into the match, right? Right. No, right. Wait, if he's I in, think yeah, it was a boxing for, match, right? Yeah. Yes. And she just went to her corner and says, I'm out, because she thought that this was a trans woman mm-hmm. that, and she's like, there's no way I can't fight it. A biological male. But in fact, what we've learned over the last few days, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. After um, some media jumped on it, many people spoke out and said, oh, this trans you know, person is in the boxing ring with a woman. And, and I'm thinking to myself, wait, okay, what? Whenever I hear these kind of immediate proclamations, the issues, I go, let's dig into this story before right. we really... It's when you're in the news, like as I was, you double check. You don't just scream out a headline mm-hmm. if you are, uh, in the, if you have in any ju- credentials, right? If you're a journalist, you can't do that. No, but but nobody should do that. I know, but everybody does. I know, but it it, it sensationalizes things. It spreads rumors. Mm-hmm. It fuels propaganda. It fuels lies. It right. fuels untruths. And that, I don't care what the story is. Something right. I agree with, disagree with, doesn't matter. I just, let's you get the truth the out truth. there. So go on, because you, so, you've got it all. Well, the, the Algerian has been um, identified as intersex. And intersex is when you have both biological parts of a male and a female. I'm just going to quick okay, Google yeah, please, this right yeah, here. Yeah, let's define it. So. Intersex anatomy. Okay, for a baby may have a larger than usual clitoris, no vaginal opening, a very small penis, or their features doctors sometimes refer to as ambiguous genitalia. Now, I've heard about oh, that. Okay, that Meaning, makes sense. Yeah, features that make determining the sex more difficult. Okay, intersex person might have both ovarian and testicular tissue. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. you've <laughs> there's something scrambled here with their genetics. Exactly. And can I, I looked up a couple of things, and... Um, for like XY, as this Algerian okay. had XY, so women are XX. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and X, males are XY. XY. Okay. But anyway, this intersex thing, so... That is so interesting. Well, the World Boxing Federation or whatever had turned this particular athlete, the Algerian boxer, down and said, no, you can't compete in there. But the IOC okayed it. And so I mm-hmm. think that this boxer... Who you? What is? What's the most recent event? I think you said uh, something happened today, later in the day. Something about. I thought you referred to this earlier. We we're talking about how she apologized, or she. Well, the boxer, the Algerian um, intersex person, uh, was apologized to by the Italian 
Her uh, competitor. Her competitor, because I don't think she even understood what was going on, because she thought oh. it was a male. But they they say that they could not treat... I just, I just read this. The IOC cannot treat this as a transgender case. Mm. So... <laughs> because it's not. It's not. And that's what naturally everybody thought, and I'm sure that's what the opponent thought. Yeah. And so she was angry, but now she's like, well... I, I guess I was wrong. I was wrong. And what category should this person be in for their abilities and their hormones? And that's... Well, that is up, that's up for a debate, right? right? Absolutely. Because, uh, it was weird. I was watching a little of the video, and from one angle, I thought, wow, that really looks like a guy. And I thought, from another angle, I thought, no, I see the feminine, mm -hmm. the femininity there. I don't... The physical... You right, know, family. right, and I, and I I was even confused, but she was much larger. Um, the Algerian was much larger than the Italian. I know, and I thought they did that by weight. I don't know. Don't they do boxing by weight? I hate boxing. I do too. <laughs> I don't like violent. I don't like things. No, that violent and sports. the cage thing. Oh, that. Oh, oh I don't think that's an Olympic sport. I don't know. Thank but God. I don't even think that's a sport. But <laughs> that's just sheer violence and bloodlust. Well, I sure hope in that they, you know, within a few months, they're going to do a deep dive into this story and give us all the facts and yeah. where this person should land for mm -hmm. competition. Yeah. Because uh, intersex, boy, the more I dove into this, all these words were being flung about. I started looking into this. And I mean, it gets crazy. Has a hermaphrodite ever had a baby with themselves? It's like there's no with such... Themselves. With themselves. Yeah. Because oh, they have minute. ovarian oh, and testicular... Oh, they can get their... Oh, that's what you were talking about earlier. They can get their own self pregnant? Well, I no. They're saying... Oh. <laughs> that's why I looked it well, up. <laughs> there is no such case reported in humans in medical literature. But I, I, you know, I have to say, I feel a lot of emotion for anybody who has any kind of... Well, yeah, they had to live their whole life being non-identified yeah. in a who knows what category. Identity confusion. And no matter yeah. how you feel about uh, it, this or that, it comes down to biology mm -hmm. and they don't have any they didn't have any say in it. This it, is it's what not their happened. fault. Nope. And that's probably why the Italian component the Italian opponent apologized. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what okay, Brittany Griner. A lot of people have talked about her. Right. Really? Okay. Oh yeah. Remember? I mean, because she has like almost looks mm -hmm. like an Adam's apple, yes. and mm -hmm. and yet she's extremely feminine, and she's on a women's basketball mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. and she's the one that's top of mind for me, only because they just brought back all those uh, oh. people from Russia. Right. You know the prisoner exchange, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the swap. Yep. So I was like thinking, oh yeah, Brittany Griner, and then I this topic came up, and so it was sort of all top of mind, which is okay. why I'm bringing her into the mix no, because that makes sense. a lot of people questioned her. This is a loaded topic. That is. Okay, so next topic. Do you want to talk? Okay, well, we can talk about the cancellation of the triathlon. Oh, well, we have talked about mm -hmm. the gross Sun River. I told you when I was over there, I thought it looked filthy. Well, it says that there were triathletes that did swim in it. There Ew. was a race in it. Did you see that? No, I did I not. Did. There was a race in it, and they said after competing in the dirty Sun... Is it the Sen? Or no, the Sen. The Sen River. They felt and saw things we shouldn't, shouldn't even think about. Oh, oh. So here they are. Oh, it's so gross. Exerting all their physical energy, but yes, yet in their minds, they're like, we're, we're swimming through sludge. Oh. Oh, can you imagine? It's loaded with fecal matter that's disgusting. Oh. And you know what? That should not have even been allowed. They should no. have just said, either we drop this component and it's kind of... That makes that screws it up for them, or figure out how to do it in a pool. I totally agree. They can. There should have been a plan B. Yep. Knowing this a month or two ago, when they're like, "Oh, the river's still dirty. What are we going to do?" Yeah. No one did anything. They're like, "Oh, we'll get it clean still." You can't clean a whole river. Mm -mm. What do you do? Pour chlorine and kill all the fish? I mean, well, there's, there's that. Yeah. There's so many different things that you probably have to keep in mind when you're cleaning a huge giant river, and they well, it's did a long river, right? And all kinds of stuff. So I feel horrible for the triathlon that got canceled. They worked four years, five years, six years to train for this. And I feel worse for the ones that actually went in. I Yeah, that's a toss-up on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd rather say, no, I'll, I'll pass. Right. Rather than getting, you know, bacteria, viruses, God only knows, Ew. you know, um, who knows, parasites, everything. Oh, yeah. That could 
kill them mm -hmm. or make them permanently disabled. I told you, remember I, I, I brought up that um, quote, I, didn't, I don't remember the exact quote, but Catherine Hepburn, she was being interviewed on 60 Minutes and something about, she goes, oh yes, people always, I can't do a Catherine Hepburn, why yeah. I'm blinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> she has it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, and why I blink so much. And then she started to explain it was from a scene in a movie that she had done decades, decades prior that it was in a filthy swamp or oh. something like that. And it, she got an eye infection. And so oh it always God. made her blink a lot more. And so I'm thinking, well, that's <laughs> lifelong damage to your body. Exactly. Of course, the studios back then didn't care. And apparently no. yeah. in Paris, you know, the IOC should have just said, no, no, no one's getting damaged here. And no the, one's being put at risk. The shenanigans where they're like, the mayor's going swimming. In the sun, and I saw her go in. Did you? I didn't. I just heard about okay. it afterwards. And then the president said he was going to jump in, but I don't think he ever did. Well, they have and to have so, somebody in charge. Right. Not dead. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so it that part was a total bummer. Yeah. Shame on France on that. Yeah. Um, Bad call. Bad call. Okay. Then we are we have the Chinese swimmer, which. Fascinating story. I just read up on it. I know nothing and about this. You're going to have to educate me. I need me. to look up my facts. The Chinese swimmer, Pan Za, I can't pronounce Don't his worry last about name. It. They're tough. In the 100 meter freestyle gold, he won the 100 meter freestyle. Um, he got the gold for that. He won the gold for that. And the controversy is uh, a lot of these commentators say there's no way that it was humanly possible. Okay, they said his record-breaking victory was not humanly possible. Meanwhile, Chinese athletes racked up more medals in swimming and shooting and are looked to clench more in tennis and table tennis, whatever. So, well, what, Wait, not, what, not humanly possible. What does that mean? If you saw the race, he was a half a lap ahead of everybody else. He broke records and everything. And when the American swimmer and I want to say Aust Australian swimmer came out of the water, they were like shaking their heads. So there, a controversy started pretty quickly after that race. It was like Superman. I wonder if he'll be checked for doping. I well, mean, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. They got to check I him right away. I mean, it's right the most away. obvious. Right. So, it, But he must have been really, really fast before because he made it this far. It'd be interesting to see how he did in his trials and if they were way up, way up here or if he maybe did something before the race. I'm not accusing him of anything. They just have to check it all out. I mean, everything's on the table. I mean, you've got I, that either he was a phenom before it wasn't news because it's China because we didn't hear about it mm -hmm. or there's some hanky panky. Yeah, I totally agree. So if you, you can, you should Google that race. I will. 100 meter freestyle men's because then you'll see how he's just like, boom. And I go, gosh, I never knew China was so great in swimming. I mean, I just guess I didn't pay attention. Well, they usually have really great gymnasts. Right. I'm thinking gymnasts. There's a couple other sports that they're good at. Yeah. But so that's another little story that wow. gonna, well, I'm sure we'll get some information as it as it comes about if they test them. And how does the testing go? Is it random or is it everybody? I have no idea. I, I, I unless there, there's, if there's suspicion, then probably they would. But then thought, that would be so random. Yeah. It seems like you got to test everybody. Yeah. I think... Doesn't it? Yeah. And nowadays, it seems like they come up with things to to hide and mask the, the actual uh -huh. results of the test. So maybe he did take something, but it's not going to show up. Well... Who knows? And maybe they... Maybe after each competition, maybe that's when they get tested. Like oh, within... right. Mm -hmm. Like oh, eight sure. hours or I ten hours. I would say it has to be within a couple hours. Yeah. Because... Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's been going on for a long time. Right. It it definitely has. Well, that's why Russia's not here. Right. That's why Russia's not in the competition, yeah, right? Because I of uh I, I was wondering, what if Russia was here? How would that affect all the results? Because they're so competitive. Mm. I mean, they are serious. But anyways, I'm glad they're not. They're serious and absolutely no fun. No fun. And, how can an entire... <laughs> yeah, how how can an entire country be so dour? You know? I know. Yeah, it's yeah, that's really sad. So somebody brought something up to me today because I was talking to a customer about the boxing situation, mm -hmm. and it made her angry because she felt that so many people were not aware of it. 
before, I don't think she had all the facts about the intersex at this point. She was more, I was a man. And she goes, because guess what? Simone uh, Biles is on TV every single night, all night. <laughs> and I said, well, not really, but that's what, that's what they're showing, a lot of the more popular sports. Yeah, that's what And we yeah. were talking about fencing. I think we got a gold. Oh, yeah, we got a gold. Um, a gold first, um, I think we got a gold and a silver. Or just a gold. Well, uh, for sure we got a gold. That yeah. the yeah, that one woman. Right. She's wearing a cool white costume. Cost. What do you so call it? So there's a lot of underdog sports, unfortunately, that we're not yeah. seeing that I like to watch. Ping pong. Did you see ping pong? The I other didn't day? see. I haven't even seen it on the schedule, and it must be one of those things that runs overnight that you right. have to tape if you really want to see it. Mm-hmm. I know. Even the men's basketball, which I was watching because right. I wanted to see my the commercial I'm supposedly oh, in, that's and, right. and the men's basketball is late at night, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to tape all this stuff just to find no. a damn commercial. And, and we so can ping look pong, it up. ping pong. Like I wonder, and, but there is a whole other week left. I know. I know. But it seems like track and field, yeah, they get a lot of play. Track and field, swimming, and... Gymnastics. Yeah, they get a lot of play. Right. Yeah. Um, volleyball. Oh, volleyball. <laughs> the men's didn't do well. We lost. We did. Oh, we mm-hmm. did. Yeah. Uh, well, Cuba was great beat Britain. us I don't know. in the first round. Oh. I was almost happy for him. I'm like, okay, defect now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you got to go back to your country? Like, I feel bad. Yeah, that they have to go back yeah. there. Remember when, when athletes used to defect when they were over here? I do. I was just thinking of that. It was yeah. like, I, I didn't know what it meant because I was so young. Yeah. Like, oh no, they're going to stay here. I'm, and everybody was talking about it. It was a big story. It was like um, East German mm-hmm. would would come, would defect. Um, Russians would defect yep. and yep. China. Yep. I mean, not shocking. No. Authoritarian they come over regimes. Here and they were like, wow, this is great. Yeah. Like, why am I living there? I can, yeah. I can train here and get, a, you know, a good coach here because mm-hmm. I'm awesome. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, they were saying people, it's, it's sad about the underdog sports, how we're not keeping up on that, but they're not showing them as much. And I'm sure it has to do with ratings Yeah, and, you know, advertisers. So we don't have control over that. Other than that, I have to say, I think NBC is doing a great job with some of the coverage though. I do, I am enjoying the mm-hmm. cutaways and the way they're packaging things. Yes. And, and I do feel bad for the underdog sports too. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, no, I think they're doing a really good job and I just love the interviews after. They're, like the next morning, and they're all wearing their medals, and yeah, it's really exciting. The you know, in-depth yeah. back humans, the backstories, yeah, about their life when they were struggling or whatever, and how they got to where they are. And how can you not love a human interest story about somebody who's struggled to become the best at what they've been doing all their life mm-hmm. for a mere moment, or right, a few and moments in time? I, I hate to keep going back to Simone Biles, but look at her whole entire life. Mm-hmm. It was not stable, and. She made it happen. Yep. Uh, one little last story is about the surfing competition oh, yeah. in Tahiti oh, yeah. where the poor commentator stepped on coral. Colin Jost from SNL. That was Colin Jost. That's Colin Jost. He's over He's there. He's married to, is he married to? Scarlett uh, Johansson. Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, it was him. It was him. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And he, he he was barefoot, and they were having him do a stand-up in, you know, the ocean. Okay. And apparently he stepped the wrong way, and he was barefoot, and Coral cut his toes, which is really bad. Really a bad thing. We do know that it's really bad. Yeah. Why don't you explain... You know, you don't have to name names, but just oh, explain just, a friend that you had that has stepped on coral and one of my brothers in broadcasting um, mm-hmm. had that happen years ago, and he's still plagued by it. Very year, much so. I mean, decades later. Wow. And I mean, it's is seriously affected his lifestyle and his life. And so you just got to be really careful. I, I don't know why they put Colin Jost in bare feet. I mean, it's really cute for the stand up, yeah. but we're looking at him from the waist up. So, and so he was saying at one point when I, I first saw him. Uh, do the, the one stand up. He was saying, well, this is what's happening. I'm standing here in the sand and my feet are all cut up with coral and I can literally feel ants in and out of my wounds. And I thought to myself, Ow. I hope he's kidding, but Whoa. he wasn't. Ew. Yeah, and it's pretty gross. So, And then they showed his bandaged up toes oh my later. I hope that he's getting really good medical care because right. that's it's like It's kind of like a Lyme disease. It never goes away. I mean... Well, I, I'm trying to compare it to something. I don't know. I don't know if it's a virus. I don't. I really. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just. So it's strange. awful because it gets in to what? your your bloodstream. Blood yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and it can get into your bones. Oh, you know, it's just. It's very serious. So I hope he's all right. Good luck, Colin. Yeah. We're rooting for you. 
And he was surfing. They showed him surfing, too. Oh, really? I mean, he's not, you know, <laughs> Olympian level, <laughs> but he's a surfer. I guess he oh, surfs so off maybe, Long Island. Maybe that's why he got involved in the surfing oh, event. Yeah, and yeah. it's NBC. Oh, duh. Yeah. Everything relates to everything. The commercials relate to who's there. What about Snoop? Have you seen him bouncing around? Yeah. I saw He's a couple. literally kind of floating around. Yeah, I saw a couple packages with him. I, okay. There what? was, I can't remember the one thing he did that was, it was pretty amusing. And then there were two other that were sort of lackluster. He was, mm. the one that I did see, which I can't remember, so that tells you something. Oh. What was was pretty damn funny. Okay. I mean, he's just, he's a likable guy. He is. He you is. know? You know, and he's promoting, I mean, sure, sure a lot of people are going to follow him through the Olympics because he's so funny and he's mm-hmm. got a fan base. Right. So it's good to uh, diversify commentators. Yeah. Which, yeah, which I've really noticed this whole, from the opening ceremonies to now. And Martha Stewart was there. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. Snoop's there, so. <laughs> I know. And that is the oddest couple ever, oh, but. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. It it seems to work. (laughs) So anyways, if anybody wants to let us know what they think about the Olympics and give us your feedback, or if you know any really juicy backstories, we want to hear about them. Yeah. And stay tuned for the podcast that's going to drop on Monday, where we interview your friend and professional cyclist, Nicola McDonald. Correct. And she... Gave us some inside skinny on mm-hmm. the Olympic Village and some of the other little happenings and what it takes to become. She should have been on the Olympic team for right. Australia. Right. And uh, she's not, but like by a hair's breadth, she's not. So anyway, tune in on Monday for that. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Harvey. Ladies Who Question is executive produced and edited by me, Lisa Dominique and also executive produced by Holly Caulfield. Holly also does most of our research, and Claire Caulfield is in charge of technical assistance and social media. Music, My Lionheart. Sketch music by Florian Manx and Matthew Anderson. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe, follow, rate, and review Ladies Who Question on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Send your thoughts to ladieswhoquestion at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Threads, and Our website, ladieswhoquestion.com. All content discussed on Ladies Who Question are the opinions of Lisa Dominique and Holly Caulfield and should not be construed as advice of any kind. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as advice of any personal or medical issue for yourself or others. This disclaimer also applies to guests or contributors to the podcast.